What's up, everybody? Charlie Marlowe here. Got to jump on real quick and talk about this Tyler O'Neill trade breaking late last night. Not late, but last night on Friday. Cardinals trading Tyler O'Neill to the Boston Red Sox for two pitchers, reliever Nick Robertson and minor league pitcher Victor Santos. We'll talk about those guys in a second. And uh, comment, like, subscribe. Let me know what do you think of this deal. I think most of us figured Tyler O'Neill would be traded even before this week. Then that gets exacerbated when John Mozeliak puts it out there on MLB radio that they are listening to offers on Tyler O'Neill, something he never does in terms of actually saying we're listening to offers, we're shopping this guy. And then Scott Boris comes out a day or two later with a nice little chirp back saying, uh, yeah, it's nice for the Cardinals' talent evaluation that they have players better than Tyler O'Neill." Then we just happened to have John Mozeliak on our radio show, Hot Take Central, 590 The Fan, KFNS, on Friday morning. And I asked him specifically about the comments he made about Tyler O'Neill. And, and I, I asked, and this is on YouTube. You can check this. There's a long version and a short version on my channel, the last couple of videos. But I said, basically, is it hard to put that toothpaste back in the tube and bring a Tyler O'Neill back for 2024? And he said it would be challenging. Funny thing is, he also, he said before he even came on, look, I may get pulled into something. I only have 10 minutes to do the interview. Now, I don't know this, but look, if you have a deal later that, that night, it's probably been in the works for a day or so. So who knows? So, so maybe John Mozeliak had to uh, scurry away from his interview with us, Hot Take Central, to finalize the Tyler O'Neill deal. So my first impression is the return feels light. I'm not going to go crazy over this. But uh, let me explain my thoughts. And, and to be fair, like this isn't a huge deal, but I think it got to the point, and everybody's to blame for this. Tyler O'Neill, Cardinals, Ollie, I think everybody's to blame for the fact that it seemed to have gotten to a point of no return where Tyler O'Neill had to go somewhere else. And at the end of the day, this really isn't about Ollie chirping him for, for not running hard that, that time early last year. At the end of all of this, the reason Tyler O'Neill was moved is he couldn't stay on the field. I think we all need to focus on that. Tyler O'Neill, when healthy that one year, was amazing. 2021, eighth in the MVP. The previous year, gold glove, pretty healthy the COVID year, played 50 out of 60 games. I think he played 138 in the year. He was really good. We would not be talking about this. Even if Tyler O'Neill was only running 93% last year, if he was healthy, playing 140, 145, 150 games per year the last couple seasons, we would not be talking about this. They would put up with an incident like that every once in a while. If they didn't think he was running 100%, but he was doing it because he wanted to stay on the field, he was staying on the field. He wasn't popping hamstrings and all that. The only reason we're having this conversation right now is because Tyler O'Neill was hurt all the time. The best ability is availability. Tyler O'Neill was not available very often for the St. Louis Cardinals. So let's focus on that, first and foremost. Also, only one year of control left for Tyler O'Neill. Let's be real. He was not going to sign here as a free agent. Everybody knows that. It wasn't like Tyler O'Neill was going to have a good year next year, and then he stays, in my opinion. I don't think that was going to happen. If he has a good year, he's going to go somewhere else, not the Cardinals. Now, it could, it could be he stays with the Red Sox, but that's a different story. So... Look, the value can't be tremendously high, but that's why also I don't think you should give him away for a bucket of balls. I'm not saying that Nick Robertson and Victor Santos are a bucket of balls. It feels light to me. I'm not going to pretend like I know who these guys are. Like most people, I have to look them up and, and see what's going on. I did see that John Denton tweeted out. He's MLB.com beat writer for the Cardinals. The MLB pipeline description of Nick Robertson he slots in, I believe, as the 26th best prospect for the St. Louis Cardinals. So this is not an elite-type prospect. However, he's added to the 40-man. If he's a dependable reliever with a lot of years of control, I'll be the first one to say, look, if this dude turns into Gio, uh, Gio Gallegos, I will be the first one to say, look, I was totally wrong about this deal. And I think that's a good deal to bring up because the Giovanni Gallegos, we also focus on Chase and Shreve in that deal. Remember that for Luke Voigt? And the first year or two, remember Luke Voigt went off. Was it the COVID year, led the league in homers with the with the Yankees? Luke Voigt hasn't done a ton after that. Gio Gallegos, say what you want. And I know he wasn't great in 2023. 
He's been a hell of a reliever for the Cardinals. They re-signed him. I think his career ERA is like 3.29. It's something like 3.13 for the Cardinals. And again, I understand if you're focusing on last year, it wasn't a great year for him. Gave up a bunch of big, memorable homers. I understand that. But he's essentially been, is it fair to say, the Cardinals' second best reliever for the most part for the last several years. Helsley, when healthy, is their best reliever. I'm not saying you want Gio Gallegos to be your closer, but if he's your second or third best reliever, if he can save a couple games here and there, he's a valuable piece of the bullpen. And if Nick Robertson becomes that and you get him for a bunch of years of control, I think it's I think it's six. I think it would be six. I looked last night. I can't remember. But he's only been in the big leagues for a minute. Had something like a six ERA in the big leagues. But, but big strikeout numbers in the minors. And throws like 93 to 98 miles an hour. So if he can be a solid reliever for a lot of years for the Cardinals – this is going to end up being a very nice trade. However, right now, when I see him as the 26th rated prospect for the Cardinals, it doesn't seem fantastic, but we'll see. I would say right now, I'm, you know, this isn't like hot, hot takeville. I would say I'm slightly underwhelmed with a return. And, and the only reason I say that is because I think, look, you, you can't bank on Tyler O'Neill being healthy, but if there's any year he's going to be motivated, it was going to be this this upcoming year, 2024, in his walk year to go off. And I also just, I look at the other guys in the outfield. I'm super high on Jordan Walker, like most people. I think Newt Barr is really, really good. Um, Tommy Edmond, I don't love him as a center fielder, but he is defensively dang good there. Dylan Carlson's the guy. I would have traded Dylan Carlson first over Tyler O'Neill. We've seen Tyler O'Neill be great in the big leagues. We haven't really seen Dylan Carlson be. He, he's been okay, slightly above average here and there. Um, but I don't know. I feel like every year Dylan Carlson just loses a little bit of prestige for me. Um, John Mozeliak even kind of talked about him as a fourth outfielder type. can play some center field. But we've seen Tyler O'Neill have a monster season. Even though that last month was, was amazing. Uh, what, September of 2021. But his whole year was pretty good in 2021. I think he was something like 120 OPS plus for the for the year. And then the September, he went crazy to finish with an OPS plus of like 148. And again, eighth in the MVP and uh, gold glove. That was the second year of back-to-back -back years. I believe he hit, what, 34 bombs that year. So I'm not going to go crazy over this. Again, I just when I saw the package, I just felt slightly, slightly underwhelmed. But again, if Nick Robertson becomes a dependable, good reliever for many years for the Cardinals, I'll be, I'll be the first one to say I was wrong and it was a solid trade. And then also just big picture, it did seem like Tyler O'Neill just had to go somewhere else. So it won't surprise me if, look, I think, I think once every three years or so, Tyler O'Neill is going to be healthy for 145 games and put together a, a really good season. So we shouldn't be surprised by that. I just think at the end of all this, you, you can't really judge this trade right now. You can't even judge it necessarily in the first year. Because remember, we did that. I'm repeating myself, but we did that with Luke Voigt. Everybody said that's a terrible deal. Well, Luke Voigt had the one great year. He's bounced around different teams. What, Padres, Nationals, Brewers. I think he's a free agent right now. Gio Gallegos has been a really good reliever for the Cardinals for about, what, four years or so. And they resigned him, so he'll be here longer. So I'm not going to judge this one super harshly right now. Let's, let's see what happens next year. Let's see what happens with Nick Robertson. At the end of the day, it's really it's about Nick Robertson. This Victor Santos, I feel like, is a, is a minor league depth type guy, it seems like. But although sometimes it's the second guy, it's the second guy in these deals that we don't talk about that end up being the bigger piece. Going back to like Chasen Shreve, you know, Gio Gallegos. You can go back to Peter Borges. Remember, it was Randall Gritchick. You can go back to the deal, what, Jim Edmonds. So David Freeze, who am I missing about like the second guy? This is a hockey deal, but remember in the, the trade for um, Chris Stewart, who was the second guy for the Blues? Kevin Shattenkirk ends up being the big player in that deal for, uh, for Chris Stewart when they trade Eric Johnson. So sometimes it's the second guy. So I'm not going to totally write off this Victor Santos. Sometimes that other guy we don't talk about ends up being good too. I don't know. Just want to jump on and give my thoughts. Slightly underwhelmed, not going to make a huge deal. No outrage here. We'll see what happens. I, I wish Tyler O'Neill the best. He's a cool guy, by the way. I had some, some nice discussions with him at spring training back in the day, and he's a cool dude. 
the whole bro Neil thing, he, he basically uh, just went with it. He's like, yeah, it's a meathead, but I'm kind of a meathead. We had his dad on the radio back in the day, Martin Kilcoin and Chris Gardner and I. His dad is Mr. Canada back in the day, a bodybuilder. Used to work out with um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Venice Beach, Muscle Beach. Tyler O'Neill's a cool dude. At the end of the day, man, it just came down to he just couldn't stay healthy. If Tyler O'Neill stays healthy, he's going to have a hell of a big league career. If not, he's going to be one of these guys that has a good season every four or five years. There you go. All right. How about I give the trade, what do you think? Is a B minus fair? I think a B minus is a fair grade right now for this deal for the Cardinals. B minus for Tyler O'Neill, I think it's a great deal. Get out of the uh, get out of the, the Cardinals deal where it wasn't working. Go to the Red Sox. You'd think they have a chance to win. There's pressure there too, though, so we'll see. That's a high pressure environment. He'll be playing Plinko off the uh, Green Monster, though. You know that. All right, I've talked long enough. Have a great weekend, everybody. Comment, like, subscribe. Peace out. See ya. Thanks.